Life of Pi is a novel by Jan Martel, published in 2001. The novel is divided into three distinct parts, where part one and two are told in the first-person narrative by the author, Jan Martel, who is retelling the tale that he heard from the now-adult Pai Patel. The third part is a transcript between Pai Patel and two police officers. The novel ends with Jan Martel's commentary in the first-person voice. The setting of the novel starts with Pai's childhood home in Pondicherry, India, shifting to the Pacific Ocean, to Matlin, Mexico and, fleetingly, Toronto, Canada, while Pai was stranded on sea for 227 days, beginning on July 2, 1977. Life of Pai contains elements of magical realism, allegory, and fable. Before we talk about the themes and important symbols of the novel, first a brief summary of the novel. An anonymous author travels to India to cure his restlessness, where in a cafe in Pondicherry, he meets the elderly Francis Adarubasamy, who introduces him to the incredible tale of Pi. Intrigued, the author seeks out Pisi Molitor Patel, commonly known as Pi, in Canada, conducting interviews and crafting the narrative from Pi's perspective. The storytelling occasionally pauses as the author interjects with insights gained from his discussions with the adult Pi. Part 1 of the novel begins from Pai's perspective, who is now a mature man and narrates the harrowing tale that led him to find comfort in zoology and religion. Pai was born and raised in Pondicherry, India during the 1970s. Francis Adarubasamy, Pai's father's business acquaintance, who taught Pai how to swim and named him after a well-known swimming pool in Paris. Pai's father was a zookeeper, who warned Pai and his brother, Ravi, against the wild nature of dangerous animals by making them observe a live goat fed to a hungry tiger. Though Pai learns that the most dangerous animal at a zoo is man, Pai often strays to describe topics of animal territorial dominance and zookeeping. Although the 16-year-old Pai is culturally Hindu, he practices all three religions including Christianity and Islam. Due to the Indian political emergency unrest, Pai's family sells their zoo to shift to Canada. On June 21, 1977, they boarded the Japanese cargo ship named Simsum, along with several animal cages. One night, an explosion rocks the Simsum, causing it to sink. Pai, who is awake at the time, is thrown into a lifeboat by sailors. As the ship goes down, Pai discovers he is the sole human survivor. On the lifeboat, Pai finds himself accompanied by a zebra, a hyena, and an orangutan named Orange Juice. The hyena kills and consumes the zebra, then turns on Orange Juice. In the midst of the chaos, Pai notices a tiger named Richard Parker, still on the boat, hidden under a tarpaulin. The hyena kills both the zebra and the orangutan. Richard Parker kills the hyena, leaving Pai alone with the grown male tiger. Resourceful, Pai creates a raft, gathers supplies, and establishes his territory on the lifeboat. He uses the tiger's seasickness, a whistle, and a turtle shell shield to tame Richard Parker. They coexist, albeit in constant hunger. Pai survives by emergency rations, catching fish, a bird, and sea turtles as food while canning rainwater and filtering seawater to quench thirst. Time blurs as months pass, marked by episodes like encountering a whale, braving a lightning storm, and observing an oblivious passing oil tanker ship that nearly crushes them. Pai goes temporarily blind due to dehydration and starvation, hearing a voice that he initially thinks is Richard Parker's but later realizes belongs to another blind castaway. After a tense discussion about food, Richard Parker kills the French castaway when that blind man accidentally steps on the tiger's territory in an attempt to kill Pai to eat him. Eventually, the lifeboat reaches a peculiar island made of algae and populated only by meerkats. Pi and Richard Parker recover there for weeks by eating the meerkats and drinking from the island's freshwater ponds, but Pi discovers the island is carnivorous and decides to leave. At last, the lifeboat washes up on a Mexican beach, where Richard Parker disappears into the jungle without a backward glance, inadvertently hurting Pi, while he is rescued by villagers who feed, bathe and take him to a hospital. The last part of the story is a transcript of an interview with Pai by two officials from the Japanese Ministry of Transport questioning him on why the Simpson sank in his horrifying time at sea. When Pai narrates his harrowing tale, they seem unconvinced until Pai tells them another version where the hyena is the cook that kills and eats the sailor who represents the zebra and Pai's mother instead of the orangutan. And Richard Parker is him. Eventually, the officials agree with Pai's original story and praise him for surviving with a tiger on the sea. 
In the course of the novel, the narrative is punctuated by the author's reflections on Pi's current state. After recuperating in Mexico, Pi relocated to Canada to complete high school before studying religion and zoology at the University of Toronto. Later, he married and had two children. Despite the passage of time, the memory of Richard Parker lingers, and the pain from the tiger's ultimate abandonment persists in Pi's thoughts. Now let's look at the most significant themes of the novel. Survival and resilience are at the center of the narrative of life of Pi. Pai Patel finds himself in incredible circumstances, facing a shipwreck, isolation at sea, and the ambitious task of coexisting with a grown Bengal tiger. Through his journey, the novel explores the indomitable spirit of the human will to survive against all odds. Pai's survival begins with the sinking of the Tsimsum, the cargo ship carrying his family and a menagerie of animals. The lifeboat becomes a microcosm of Pai's struggle for survival as it provides both a refuge and a battleground. Alone on a lifeboat for 227 days, he grapples with the vastness of the Pacific Ocean, navigating through the unpredictable nature of the open sea. The ordeals Pai faces extend beyond the immediate threats of hunger and thirst which make him temporarily blind. His months at sea are marked by encounters with storms, a whale, and an oblivious oil tanker that nearly crushes the lifeboat. The presence of a zebra, a hyena, and an orangutan ensures that the natural order disintegrates into chaos. The hyena, a savage being, kills the helpless zebra and the orangutan, leaving Pai alone with Richard Parker. In this dire situation, Pai's resourcefulness and the ability to adapt according to his environment come to the forefront. He establishes territorial dominance on the lifeboat, using a whistle, a turtle shell shield, and the tiger's seasickness against him to tame Richard Parker. He makes sure the tiger is aware that Pai is the source of his food and thus to not harm him while navigating the predatory instincts of the tiger. This ingenious survival strategy showcases Pai's ability to adapt and find solutions in the face of imminent danger. One of the most poignant examples of Pai's resilience occurs on a peculiar island made of algae, inhabited by meerkats. Initially a haven, Pai and Richard Parker recover there by eating meerkats and drinking from freshwater ponds. However, Pai discovers the island's carnivorous nature and decides to leave, highlighting his unwavering commitment to survival despite apparent comfort. Survival is not only physical but also moral and emotional. To survive, Pai is forced to consume meat and take lives, the very two things that he abhorred, overcoming his religious stances on vegetarianism and pacifism. Pai strives to overcome the isolation, loneliness and fee feels in the company of just a tiger for company and no human in sight, missing social contact. Afterwards when the tiger leaves him on the Mexican beach without a backward glance, Pai still remembers this moment years later. Despite the passage of time and the establishment of a family, the memory of Richard Parker lingers, and the pain of the tiger's ultimate abandonment persists in Pai's thoughts. In the aftermath of his ordeal, Pai's determination extends to his post-survival life. When narrating the dreadful tale, the officials express skepticism, prompting Pai to provide an alternative version where the animals are replaced by humans. Introducing an element of doubt and relativity. This also suggests Pai's will to survive even human politics and his strong survival instincts when faced with any kind of obstacle. The reader learns of his relocation to Canada, completion of high school, and academic pursuits in religion and zoology. This enduring emotional impact emphasizes the lasting effects of the survival journey on Pi's character. Life of Pi is a literary voyage that delves into the profound realms of spirituality and faith. Pi's spiritual journey begins in Pondicherry, India, where he is born into a Hindu family. He's not content with a singular faith, he explores Christianity and Islam, embracing the tenets of all three major religions simultaneously. This eclecticism and spiritual practice reflects Pai's open-mindedness and the universality of faith as a source of solace and guidance. The theme of spirituality is interwoven with Pai's personal growth and resilience. Religious symbols and rituals such as prayer and meditation appear throughout the novel, signifying Pai's exploration of faith and the coexistence of different belief systems. When his family decides to sell their zoo and emigrate to Canada, Pai's faith becomes a vital anchor. The political unrest in India, specifically the emergency, serves as a backdrop, emphasizing the role of faith as a refuge in times of societal upheaval. During the tumultuous journey at sea, Pai's faith is tested on multiple levels. The shipwreck catapults him into a lifeboat with a Bengal tiger, where survival becomes a daily struggle. 
He is forced to let go of vegetarianism and pacifism to survive. He does things that he ethically abhors like eating meat and taking lives. Pai's relationship with Richard Parker takes on a symbolic dimension in the context of spirituality. The tiger, initially a fearsome presence, transforms into a companion. Pai's ability to coexist with the tiger symbolizes the harmonious balance that can be achieved between the individual and the divine, even in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. Pai Patel's extraordinary tale of survival becomes a meditation on the nature of storytelling, the subjectivity of truth, and the inherent power of narrative in shaping our understanding of the world. The story begins with an anonymous author meeting Pai in Canada, who, in turn, recounts his incredible journey at sea. The author becomes the conduit through which Pai's narrative is communicated to the reader. This framing device raises questions about the reliability of the storyteller and introduces an element of subjectivity into the narrative. Pai's journey, as narrated to the author, involves a shipwreck, survival on a lifeboat with a Bengal tiger named Richard Parker, and encounters with the animal kingdom and the forces of nature. But the story takes an even more fascinating turn when Japanese officials question the veracity of Pai's account. Pai, sensing the official skepticism, offers an alternative version where the animals are replaced by humans. This moment highlights the malleability of truth and the role of storytelling in shaping and reshaping reality. Pai's dual storytelling serves as a lens through which the novel explores the subjective nature of truth. The first version, with the animals, is fantastical and captures the imagination. It speaks to the power of storytelling as a means of survival and coping with the harsh realities of Pai's journey. The second version, where the animals are replaced by humans, challenges the reader to consider the arbitrary nature of truth. Pai, in this instance, becomes both the storyteller and the audience, illustrating the fluidity of reality. The novel poses fundamental questions about the nature of truth. Is truth an objective reality, or is it a construct shaped by individual perspective and storytelling? The duality in Pai's narrative suggests that truth is not an absolute, immutable concept but rather a dynamic force influenced by the storyteller's intentions, the audience's receptiveness, and the context in which the story is told. The theme of storytelling in truth is further explored in the context of Pai's diverse religious practices. Pai, a Hindu, Christian, and Muslim simultaneously, reflects on the power of storytelling in shaping religious narratives. His ability to find solace and meaning in multiple religious traditions highlights the idea that truth, in the realm of spirituality, is often found in the narratives that provide comfort and purpose. Pai's narrative is a testament to the transformative power of storytelling. His ability to craft a tale that captivates, challenges, and elicits emotional responses speaks to the enduring human need for narrative, even in the face of skepticism and doubt. The novel suggests that, regardless of the objective reality of Pai's journey, the emotional and psychological impact of the story is undeniable. Life of Pai is replete with symbolism throughout the narrative. Let's study them. Water is a pervasive symbol throughout the novel. The Pacific Ocean, where Pai's lifeboat drifts, represents both the vastness and unpredictability of life. It becomes a canvas for Pai's spiritual exploration and a symbol of the unknown. The ocean is simultaneously beautiful and terrifying. Pai's journey is intricately tied to his relationship with water, reflecting the ebb and flow of his spiritual and physical struggles. Another important symbol is the tiger, Richard Parker. On a literal level, Richard Parker is an adult male Bengal tiger with whom Pai shares the lifeboat, but, symbolically, Richard Parker becomes an embodiment of the primal survival instinct within Pai. The tiger represents the wild, untamed aspects of human nature. Although acting as an unruly companion, his presence on the lifeboat and the interactions between Pai and the tiger becomes a metaphor for the struggle between civilization and the natural world. Moreover, the tiger's presence on the lifeboat symbolizes both the inherent beauty and the brutality found in the natural world. The nickname or short form, Pi, is the mathematical constant, reflecting the protagonist's analytical and rational nature, while his full name, Piscine Molitor Patel, was named after a swimming pool of Paris and thus evokes the fresh aquatic promise of his name. Thereby, it reflects his dual identity and the blending of scientific and spiritual perspectives. The lifeboat becomes a microcosm of Pi's larger journey and a metaphor for survival. The lifeboat itself serves as an idea that encapsulates Pai's physical and spiritual journey through isolation and confinement. 
It becomes a confined space where Pi grapples with survival, self-discovery, and the unpredictable nature of life. The mysterious Algae Island represents a temporary refuge and illusion in the novel, challenging Pi's perceptions of reality and highlighting the deceptive nature of appearances. The island also serves as a reminder of the unpredictability, ruthlessness, and ferocity of nature as it devours all life forms. The island was carnivorous as Pi discovers that at night, by some chemical process unknown to me but obviously inhibited by sunlight, the predatory algae turned highly acidic. The island meerkats on this mysterious island suggest the interconnectedness of life and the food chain. The island can be interpreted as an allegory of the Garden of Eden, tempting Pi away from his purpose of survival. The life buoy is another symbol that recurs in the novel. It becomes a floating haven for Pi, representing hope and the possibility of rescue. It contrasts with the harsh reality of survival on the lifeboat and serves as a reminder of the outside world, offering a glimmer of optimism amid adversity. The color orange is a recurring motif that symbolizes hope and survival, providing glimpses of optimism amid the challenges Pi faces such as the excruciating heat and blinding glare of the sun, looking like an electrically lit orange. It is the color of survival because the hole inside of the boat and the tarpaulin and the life jackets and the life buoy and the oars and almost every other significant object aboard was orange. Even the plastic, beadless whistles were orange.